Ave Maria. Ave Maria. Whenever you cross the border of one of the American states, the first sign you see is, Welcome to Massachusetts, or Welcome to New York. Before you go even a part of another mile, the next sign says, Buckle up, it's the law, and everyone buckles up. Saves the state trooper the trouble of putting handcuffs on you when he stops you for speeding. That sign pretty well gives expression to the concept of obligation, which most people have. Well, it's something you have to put up with for the good of society, but let's reduce them to a minimum. The curious thing is, the more secular society becomes, the more buckling up there is of every kind. Nowhere more so than when you have to figure out how much you owe the government in taxes. No, I'm not saying that taxes are uh, an abomination of desolation. I'm really pointing out that there is a bit of a paradox here. The modern world, the secular world, I should say, because the contemporary world is not all secular. There are many good people who believe and who have quite a different concept of law and obligation. But nonetheless, those who say, the fundamental point of reference for all human endeavor must be the secular, otherwise we will not be authentic persons. We will not be a mature, progressive society. We will be, as it were, in a kind of psychological, spiritual infancy, that characteristic uh, especially of the Catholic Middle Ages. What we want to examine then, briefly, is what do we really mean by a law, by obligation? We are so accustomed to thinking of law primarily and buckle up, it's the law. Something arbitrary, an imposition. And if possible, this would be paradise, no laws at all. Some of the first communist communes in the United States before they were set up in Russia that's right, in the 19th century, the first communist com communes were established in the United States. Were characterized by complete license, no restrictions. Everyone did whatever they pleased. They lasted about six months. Human nature can take only so much chaos. But to this day, those promoting the secular ideal of society, total independence, a declaration of independence from God, I'm equal to God, is never strangely examined for what it is. The cleverest equivocation, the cleverest form of double talk that was ever invented, precisely in order to get around what used to be called humility. Blessed John Don Scotus saw the implications of the argument when it was first circulated among a very restricted number of scholars. Well, the choice is to be human or holy, to be an adult or to be a child. Well, if I have to make that choice, I'll always choose to be human I'll always choose to be free, to be a mature adult. So conceived, obligation is nothing more than a restriction of repression of freedom. It comes out in the modern argument, the same dilemma that Blessed John Don Scotus answers so nicely in the Middle Ages, it comes out in the famous statement, well, it's my conscience, so I'm going to form it. Not even God himself, the creator, can tell me what I have to do. Curious thing is, though, when I don't do what God tells me to do, I go on a big guilt trip. Perhaps the one profession that doesn't risk unemployment at the present time is that of practicing psychology, of counseling. The simple reason is that uh, constructing the secular society somehow or other, doesn't get rid 
of conscience. And what stands behind conscience, fancy Greek word, but it's worth mentioning it, St. Thomas, St. Bonaventure, Blessed John Duns Scotus, and a host of other great doctors of the church, Sinteresis. That sense of the difference between good and evil that is not pragmatic, not based on utility, not centered on the secular as taking precedence over the moral, the religious, the worshipful. This is the point we must constantly reflect upon, that, that spark of love that enables me to recognize, even when I don't like it, that there is a difference between seeking what is merely a matter of contentment, of passing pleasure, and a desire for genuine happiness. Happiness, as Cardinal Newman remarked, is impossible without holiness, and holiness that says, I make the law, autonomy in Greek, autos domos, a law unto oneself. Put it in plain English, and we all recognize there is double talk in this. Nobody is that autonomous. If someone says, I know everything, we say, why, you pompous fool. Nobody knows everything but God. We know there is a, di is, is, is a difference. But what we don't willingly examine are all of the equivocal phrases which lead us to think that somehow or other, if I don't control my conscience, if I don't determine the rules, rules, I'm not a person. And yet I continue to disintegrate when I refuse to examine this point. Blessed John Don Scotus, Put the answer very simply, it's not an either-or proposition. Rather, it is a question of being happy and holy. We may do that on our terms, that's pride. This is what the serpent suggested to Eve, indeed, what long and persuaded her husband. Or we may do it humbly. This is how the new Adam and the new Eve did it. And if you think about it carefully, if you want to be human, you'll be humble. They both come from the same root. Adam, formed from the slime of the earth by the Creator in a very special way. The human body is the temple of the living God. No other animal body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Humble from the earth. But with what a stupendous dignity. God who is completely independent this is a mystery to us. Each divine person is independent, and yet they are perfectly united. We couldn't imagine that. We thought, if I were infinite, I wouldn't be completely united. I'd be boss. He became dependent on the Virgin Mother. That's the mystery we must reflect upon, and then we shall see all the rest. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's not an imposition. The more I am obliged, the greater my holiness, the greater my happiness. Instead of saying, buckle up, it's the law, say, instead of saying thank you, use the old English phrase still used in Spanish, much obliged. And the more I'm obliged, for instance, by taking a vow of religion, the greater will be my love. Obligation and love are not opposites. Obligation is that which guarantees the perfection of love. Ave Maria.